Protein fibrils are highly structured filamentous aggregates of individual protein monomers held together by attractive intermolecular interactions. Amyloid fibrils in particular are a common type of fibril characterized by a cross beta sheet structure. Amyloid fibril formation is key to the etiology of many well-known diseases, from Alzheimer's disease and dementia with Lewy bodies to prion disease and type 2 diabetes. On the other hand, some amyloids have important functional roles, like the curly fibrils in bacterial biofilms and the components of some types of spider silk. Understanding the kinetics of fibril formation is thus important for understanding both disease processes and the way that many organisms naturally function. To study fibril formation, we first have to think about how to represent them. Here, we see a segment of a fibril, which we can think of as a stack of protein monomers. Each differently colored element of the structure is a single protein whose connections to its neighbors forms the fibril. Note that the structure repeats. In a real fibril, the same pattern could repeat hundreds of thousands of times. Now, let's look at just one part of this stack. Here we see two monomers that are joined together across the body of the fibril. If we zoom in a bit more and switch to an atomic representation, we can see what holds the structure together. Monomers can be held together by a number of non-covalent interactions, among the most important being hydrogen bonds. Here, these bonds keep the two sides of the slice held together. They also connect each slice of the fibril with its counterparts above and below it. These vertical and horizontal connections give the fibril its characteristic form. Different fibrils can have different forms. In fact, in our work we have identified five different types of fibrils based on the patterns of connections between monomers. Let's think about how this works. As we have seen, the interface between two protein monomers can be complicated. Let's simplify matters by just thinking of each individual protein as a unit and keeping track of which proteins are bound to which other proteins. For the fibril shown here, this gives us something like this. This representation is called a graph. The nodes, or vertices of the graph, correspond to protein monomers, and the edges, or ties between nodes, indicate pairs of monomers that are directly bound to each other. In this particular fibril, this graph forms a truss-like structure that we call a 1-2-2 ribbon. Other fibrils can form different structures, some of which are simple and some of which are quite intricate. The 1-2-2 ribbon, however, is one of the two most common forms that we find in the protein data bank. The underlying network structure, or topology, of a fibril gives us a simple and general way to characterize its structure. But we can do more than that. Using a family of network models known as Exponential Family Random Graph Models, or ERGMs, we can build simple stochastic models that recapitulate the structures we see in real fibrils. We can also use dynamic extensions of ergams to study fibrilization kinetics. By focusing on how the fibril topology forms, we can gain insights into the aggregation process in an extremely computationally efficient way. Let's look at an example of fibril formation using our dynamic network model. Here, we'll work with a fibril structure we call a two-ribbon. The two-ribbon is particularly interesting to study because it is the simplest fibril form that still has non-trivial structure. To facilitate visualization, we'll make stretches of assembled two-ribbon fibril obvious by coloring them bright yellow. But, of course, a monomer doesn't have to be part of a fibril. Here are some examples of other forms we might see. We color these nodes in gray because they aren't part of a fibril structure. If they join with other nodes to form a fibril, we'll recolor them yellow. To see how the process of fibril formation works, we'll begin at the beginning with a small volume of solution containing protein monomers. Again, every node in this visualization represents one protein monomer. At first, there are no ties because no protein is bound to any other. As we run the simulation forward, that will change. Proteins will bind to each other and separate, reflecting the motions of the underlying particles in solution. Because our focus is on the topology, our visualization is in network space rather than physical space. Node positions are chosen to make the network structure visible and do not reflect physical position. As we proceed, the clock time for the simulation will be shown in the upper left. Note that as we go, we'll be running the simulation faster and faster. This is because the fibrilization process eventually starts to slow down and we don't want our movie to take as long as a real experiment. The fibrilization kinetics of our two-ribbon model go through a series of stages that we call epochs. In this first epoch, we see monomers binding together to form first tree-like oligomers and then larger unstructured aggregates. These aggregates consume more and more of the sample until all or nearly all of the monomers are incorporated.
This marks the beginning of Epic 2. At this point, we have nothing that resembles a fibril, but isolated vertices are starting to emerge whose local environment has the topology of a two ribbon. As time passes, more and more of these locally fibrillar nodes emerge, but they're still quite isolated from each other. Eventually, however, we get a collection of such nodes that is big enough to be the start of a real fibril structure, and this is what marks the beginning of Epic 3. Now, things are really starting to take off. Those little seed structures are starting to consume the aggregate, converting their neighbors into fibrillar nodes. The number of local fibrillar elements starts to grow quickly until they start to join with each other. This marks the beginning of Epic 4. At this point, we can see that something remarkable is happening. What started as an unstructured mass is obviously self-assembling into a highly structured fibrillar aggregate. The size of the fibrillar portion continues to grow until it has incorporated most of the available monomers, leading to the final epoch. Now we see the final stage of fibril self-assembly, an ever smaller number of increasingly regular two-ribbon fibrils, accompanied by a small number of highly structured oligomers. It is noteworthy that these oligomers are very different from the oligomers forming early in the fibrillization process, resembling the annular oligomers hypothesized to be the toxic species in certain disease processes. This simulation is a single realization from a larger set of simulation runs performed using the two-ribbon model. Although precise details vary from run to run, the basic pattern of behavior is consistent. We note that using other parameters with our simulation methodology can reproduce other types of fibrils observed in PDB structures, as well as fibril structures not yet experimentally observed. By using network models to study fibrillization kinetics, we can explore the complex process of molecular self-assembly in a computationally tractable and easily visualizable way. This work represents a collaboration between the Network's Computation and Social Dynamics Lab, led by P.I. Carter Botts, and the Martin Lab, led by P.I. Rachel Martin, at the University of California, Irvine. Simulation, visualization, and analysis were performed using the StatNet suite of software tools for the R Statistical Computing System. This research was supported by a grant from the National Science Foundation.